Hey guys, welcome back to Planet J. Judah and happy Lumnet Day! Yes, I am finally feeling good. My hands are feeling pretty good and we're Lumen today. So it is Easter weekend and so I am making little bunny Easter baskets for my grandkids. This one is for Chevelle, my granddaughter. Uh, let's see. And it's sparkly. Isn't that cute? Now, I did, my bind off was tight on this one, so I'm going to work on that. And hopefully, when I make Matthias's, I will do better. I didn't realize how small these were because some of the things that I got to go in here are way too big. As a matter of fact, this is just one piece. This one is for Chevelle, and then this one is for Matthias. And there's no way that they'll fit in there. However, I will open these, and hopefully they will fit in the in there. Otherwise, oops, I, I dropped it. Otherwise, I will be putting a couple of eggs. Because, let me show you. So this one would be for Chevelle. And it sits perfectly in there. And it's just, just a little basket. But I'm going to open up this troll surprise bag. And hopefully my little troll will fit in my little basket. Now I will say you let me kind of start from the beginning. First I got this pattern from Denise from lumahat.com and I will be posting a link to that video on how to actually do this in the description box below. But let's go ahead and open, whoops, open my little troll to see if it'll fit in my little basket. All right. Just gonna open, of course not. Hopefully, I don't. Just a little snippet here. There we go. Is it gonna be something cute? Oh! oh. Alright, so here is what. We can get, and let's see, it should open up to show all the different trolls that we can get. Here we go. Yes, it does. There we go. And, oh, it does have the, it has a little guitar. That's so cute. All right. So here is my troll. Isn't that cute? And then it has this little guitar or violin that's a violin I don't know can you tell can you see it, it has a little um, thing so we got Chania Chanilla I'm not sure you got that one I don't know anyways let's see we should, does it show? Woo! I'm not sure if it, <laughs> I'm trying to stick this on here, but I don't know if it's fitting properly. Anyways, it looks like you can stick your little violin on said troll but I'm gonna go ahead and fit her into Chanel's basket. Ooh. I will say I am tired. It is four o'clock Saturday morning. I am like I said the world's biggest procrastinator but there we go. Isn't that cute? Maybe I'll put the egg in there with it to prop it up a little. Go. Oh, 
There we go. Whoops. Isn't that cute? So I'm now going to go ahead and make Matthias's. Oh, first of all, I should I should show you the yarn that we're using. So for Chevelle's, it's the Mandala in uh, Aquila, Aquila. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Will that focus? Come on, focus. Of course not. But this is the colorway, and we didn't use very much at all. So it only came to the... It started with a purple and then started to go into the pink. And I really love it. And you double strand it. So I have two separate cakes here. And you pull from the middle and do your thing. For Matthias, let me put that down. For Matthias, it is also Mandala. Um, and this one is in the colorway Chai, I think. I don't know. I'm like, I'm tired, so I can barely read it. But this this is the colorway, and here are my two, and I'm going to pull from the center. And as you can see, they're not exactly the same, which will give an even more uh, marled effect, because this already has kind of a marled effect. That's the full colorway. So it should be interesting. And when we are done, I will, where'd it go? I already lost my car. Oh, there it is. I forgot I dropped it. <laughs> we will open Matthias's car and put it in his basket. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to put Chevelle's away. All right, so I have brought you down. This is my instructions. As you can see, I already checked off rows and whatnot. There we go. Sorry about that. I already checked off stuff because that was Chevelle's. Now I'm going to go ahead and get started with Matthias's. Um, let me go ahead and get my yarn ready and I will be right back. All right. So as you can see, I am getting both of them. I'm going to start with a slip knot. I can remember how to do a slip knot. Oh my goodness. There we go. We're going to attach it to the anchor peg. Like, my goodness. There we go. And then we are going to do a drawstring bind or cast on. And then I will get started on my rows. We are going to be doing every other will be, they're both knit. So one is a, a E wrap and one is a U wrap. And so it gives it a slightly different texture. It's still just a simple um, rib stitch, but it's, because we know that the two different knit stitches are um, are different, use different amounts of yarn, so they will be different in thickness. So it gives it a different texture. I am so so sorry. This is it's totally my fault. I am <laughs> a little tired. So, but anyways, uh, right now I am doing a drawstring cast on so that we can cinch the uh, two, or cinch the bottom together.
right, so we have reached the point of the basket being completed or the body of the basket being completed. I am loving how it is working up. It is so pretty. And so now we are moving on to making the ears. So we need to bind off 12, the first 12. And I have it marked here with a safety pin for my 12th, the 12th peg. Now on Denise's video, she is going to show you an extra step where she removes four in the opposite direction. Well, I'm not going to do that because you don't, it's, it's not necessary and I don't have the tool that she uses to do that. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do the basic bind off in the way that we need to do it. And I'm going to bind off 12 and then we will start doing our ear or ears, I should say, in the flat as opposed to in the round. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the basic bind off. Hopefully I will be able to um, not do it as tight as I did Chevelle's because I want the ears to not be quite as tight. So to do the basic bind off, we've knit the first two or we're knitting the first two. Oh my goodness. And then I'm going to remove this first, the second one and move it on to the first peg. If I can do that. Oh, come on. I got it all twisted. Boy. Tell you what. I definitely got it twisted in here. Whew. All right, here we go. We're going to move it on to the first peg and we're going to tighten. I didn't tighten it too tight because like I said, I want it to be loose. So now I'm going to knit off. And then I'm going to pull that loose and move it over and pull it snug. So now, as you can see, I have taken off this first peg. And I'm going to continue to do that until I reach the 12th peg. And now that we've got the first one started, all we need to do is knit the second peg and repeat the rest of the process. All right, and I just realized that this is the bottom of, or the top of the basket, so I didn't need to be quite as loose as I was, as I did it, but that's fine. It is it is fine. Um, I will need to do that when I get to the actual top of the ears. But now we are starting uh, row 18, and it is going to be an e wrap row, and we will e wrap all the way to the end, and then get ready to start row 19. Thank mm -hmm. you. Now we have completed row 18 and we're going to now go back the other way to do row 19 and we'll continue going back and forth all the way to row 31. And again, we're doing the E-wrap one way and the U-wrap the other way. So it's every other E-wrap, U-wrap, E-wrap, U-wrap. So now we are going to do the U-wrap. 
back the other direction. So I have worked this up and off the loom and if you notice it is actually a different color palette than the my first one of Methodist's but more on that in just a moment. I am going to um, first work on creating the ears with this panel and as you can see this side is a lot stretchier and that's just because uh, how this side was worked up. I still have a lot to learn. I have weaved in, this is the where I finished, and I've weaved in my ends. I'm gonna hold on to them for a second because I think I'm gonna try and knot them with the yarn I'm gonna use to create the ears. So in order to do that, we're gonna need some yarn and the needle, and I will be weaving it in the back here going one direction and then back or well going one direction then halfway up and then back down and then out the other to complete it um, but let me go ahead and get started with that and yeah we will make us some ears Question is, do I want the lighter or do I want the darker? I think I want the darker. So if I did this correctly, I should be able to pull and the ears will be created. So we're going to pull here. And there you go, isn't that cute? Now I'm going to tie these two into a knot. To secure it. And then I'm going to tie this into a knot. Now we can just fluff up, fluff up the ears. There we go. 
I will work in my ends, but for first I'm going to cinch in the bottom of the basket. And that's just really simple. You just pull it until you make your base and that's about as doesn't have to be fully closed we're not gonna you know we're not there we go gonna go ahead and cut off some of this string because I don't need all of it string yarn <laughs> And I'm going to go around a couple of times, weaving it in. Okay, so here's the situation. When I was doing Matthias's first one, this is his first basket that I did not finish because when I got it off the loom, I was doing the knot at the end and for whatever reason, it made a double knot. So I tried to undo it. Well, in doing so, it started to unravel and I, I don't know how to fix that. But as you can see, it is very similar color-wise to Chevelle's. So, I'm going to quote Bob Ross on this. This is a happy little accident. Matthias's is, is significantly different from compared to Chevelle's. So they will definitely be able to distinguish between the two. And so, yeah, here is Matthias's little Easter basket. Isn't that cute? And I love the colorway. I love how this one has a lot more white in it than his first one. And I love the much more marled effect that the two um, cakes of yarn gave. So... That being said, we're, we, we've, we've done, we've made it. We're now going to put in our little eggs, little egg. Come on, come on, get in there. There we go. There is our little egg. And now we are going to open his mystery car. Alrighty, what car did we get? Woo! Oh! So it comes with a sticker, and I will just have that set aside, but here is his car. Is that not cool? That is so cool. I love it. There we go. That is so cool. All right, so I know Punky's looks 
Chevelle's looks a little cuter, I guess. Well, no, it, it's just going to be different. So I should probably, because hers has a figurine, whereas this is going to be an egg in a car. <laughs> it's an egg in a car. There you go. There we go. So if you, in Denise's video, she put candy in these and that's cute. So I would definitely, um, you could definitely do candy. Um, if you want to do it for an Easter basket with little gifts like this, and I'll show you the gifts that I had originally purchased thinking I was going to put into these, not realizing how small they were. I don't know why I didn't realize that, but, um, if I were to do this again, I would probably do a bigger basket and I would, so if I go up to just the next size loom, I would just double. These are 31 rows total. So if I go going up to the next size, I would do 62 rows total. And if I went even bigger, then I would do 124 rows. Uh, that being said, I think these are so cute and you can still, I'm not going to, I may in the future, I don't know, but you can add eyes and a nose with the safety eyes. I know I already said this, but, um, I'm just, I'm not going to do that. And it, it is definitely consistent. One ear it stands up taller than the other because this side is looser. I I have a lot of practice to do a lot a lot a lot of practice to do and no worries I am NOT going to waste this I'm gonna hopefully try to be able to completely unravel this and what I will use this scrap yarn for is uh, learning how to knit with needles so I apologize for my being so tired. Uh, you all know that I don't script my videos and sometimes I probably should, but I was very tired when I started doing this because I was, I had made, made Chevelle's basket first so that I can make for the video that, uh, Matthias's basket. And by that time it was really, really, really late. Oh, uh, I don't know if I said this overall, it probably took me to finish um, Matthias's basket from start to finish without having to film or anything. Uh, an hour and 45 minutes. And I'm sure that if you're more experienced than I am, you will be able to do this a lot faster than I did. Um, but yeah, it's a quick little project. I know tomorrow is actually Easter. And if you do do this, uh, let me know. Leave me a comment. And it, like I said, it's a simple, quick project that you can do. It's super easy. I really don't see the distinction between doing the two different knit stitches. Um, knowing how to do it now, I would maybe do different. I would test it. I'd play, with, play around with it. Doing knit and purl. Doing a true knit. I don't know. I would just play with it and do other things and see what what I can do. <laughs> that being said, if you like this video, hit the like button, leave me a comment. I hope you guys have had a great day and are having a great Easter weekend. And if you'd like to be notified of any and all future uploads, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to click all on the notification bell. And with that, <laughs> And all of my crazy tiredness, remember, gravity works, guys. All right, never mind the scarecrow. I just wanted a cute display. Aren't they so cute? But do you see what I mean? These are the eggs that I bought to go in their little baskets, along with a Reese's candy carrot. Aren't they so cute?